that uh, that last verse said he was speaking intently through his marvelous gra grace. I am happy. Yeah. Listen, lost man is not happy or hopeful. Yeah. Now he gets to places in his life or her life where they think that they're happy, but they're really not happy and they're certainly not whole. And the reason why they're not whole is because lost individuals have a dead spirit. We covered that ground. So you cannot be whole. But when God saved you, you experienced that that resurrection and newness of that new life that yeah. Doug preached to us about the other Sunday night. Amen. Amen. And what a joy that is. Amen. Yeah. And li listen, if you're here tonight and you're not happy, there has to be a reason for that. Yeah. Amen. If you're saved and you're not happy, then there, there's definitely a spiritual reason Amen. that leads to that. It, yeah. That is the underlying factor in your life if you're saved and you know it, but you're not happy tonight, you're not at rest tonight, you don't have the peace of God that passeth on all understanding tonight, then there's, a, there's an underlining factor, and it has to do with the spiritual condition that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in a place tonight where you can get help. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, the second verse... Of that said with no hope of reward. I remember when I was in that place when I had no no hope of reward. But I'm glad tonight I've got hope tonight. And my hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. I do remember the time and I do remember the place. I don't remember the exact time as far as looking on a watch. I didn't have a watch on the morning I got saved. But I do remember the place. And I've told you this before, but some years ago when uh, Brother... Doug and myself went to Miami uh, to get his belongings that were shipped back uh, on a container from Belize. I took him through Margate, and we found where the First Baptist Church was when I got saved, but it was not there any longer. They had, I don't know what they'd done, if they'd moved, if they'd closed, the, the closed down or what, but they'd sold the property and they'd built the new municipal building uh, in Margate. But I knew exactly where it was at. And I took Brother Doug by there. And I said, there's where I got saved in the spring of 1969. Amen. And uh, even though the building was gone, that doesn't matter. No. Amen. And some years ago, uh, I'm talking about many years ago, the devil was, was on me and trying to convince me that I never really got saved. And, I, you know, I just got tired of, you know, wrestling around with him and, He's a liar and the father of it. Amen. You know, he's a murderer as well. And that's what uh, we learn in the scripture. And so I just told him one evening, I said, look, devil, I said, uh, it's too far from Pigeon Forge to Margate. And I don't have enough money to buy the gas. You want to make the trip, help yourself. <laughs> but I, and I pulled over beside the road and opened the passenger door of my pickup truck. You said, preacher, you're crazy. Well, it's okay. But I just opened the door of my pickup truck and I said, here's where you get out. I said, if you want to make the trip, you can make it easier than I can. I don't have the money to take you. And if I had the money to take you, I wouldn't take you anyway. I said, you know where it's at. You know what time it was. You were there. I was there. The Holy Spirit was there. And I got saved. Amen. And if you ain't got over it, I'm sorry. But the ride ends here. Amen. Amen. And then I just shut the door and drove on. Amen. Say, have you wrestled with that? End? No, not, not, no, not one other time have we ever wrestled about that again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look, I know tonight that I'm saved. 